I'd like to call this meeting of the Waitley Select Board uh, open um, about 6.02 p.m. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, I've got first item on the of business is meeting minutes to review and approve meeting minutes from February 28th. Are there any comments on those meeting minutes? One really minor. Oh, one really small thing? Grammar thing. On page four, it's going out the next week or two, four, two, two. Or to complete the sidewalk, and I'm just to complete the sidewalk. So two last minutes. paragraph, second sentence. Last paragraph of page four. What is it under? Under a complete streets project update. Yeah. For to complete. Yeah, that's that's very. Uh, it does sound very country to say. Well, for to do that. <laughs> we just. Do. To complete. It's going to have to complete the site. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that was the major. That was the major change. <laughs> yes. Okay. No comments from me. Okay. All right. Well, I would uh, take a motion then. I move to approve the meeting minutes with the minor change suggested by Fred. Second. Okay. All those in favor, Julie? Yes. Fred? Yes. Me? Yes. Okay, very good. On to the vendor and payroll, payroll warrants. Um, does anybody have any comments about those? Nope. Nope. Okay, nope, nope. That, that does not require a vote. Uh, it's time for public comment. It's time to listen to comments from the public related to items not listed on the agenda. Uh, looking at the screen, uh, I see Jim here. Do you have anything to say about things that are not on the agenda? No, I just had a, a comment about the COVID section, but I can wait. Oh, when we get to COVID. Okay, I'll keep that in mind when we get to COVID. Okay, I think we're there because public hearings and scheduled appointments, there are none. The the poll hearing thing, that was not continued to today. That's for the next right. meeting, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, be a, yeah, be a there we are at um, item six. Man, are we cruising through this agenda or what? Oh, there's a second page. Yes, yeah, sorry. Okay. Uh, we're on number six, which is our COVID-19. Usual reminder goes out that we have rapid test down office. And Jim, what do you have to say? Uh, the only comment I'd like to add, I spoke with Amy uh, Lavalley and got some um, COVID tests for the police station. So they're also available at the police station. Okay. If you want to get Okay, them. you're good. Okay. All right, <clears throat> uh, moving on to number seven, old business. Uh, we need to set the date for the 2023 annual town meeting. Last time we proposed May 23rd, but we didn't officially vote on it. Um, how are things looking for the budget and the 23rd in general as a date for the town meeting? Oh, <clears throat> I think that's good, I think it's good. Okay. Um, Good. I hope it. I hope it will not be our, our our town moderator will not be uh, out of town or anything for that. Uh, I don't know if he's allowed to do that remotely. Is he? Okay. Well, I'll keep my fingers crossed that he doesn't get called out of town. Um, all right. Well, I would take a motion on that then. Move we set the annual town twenty twenty three annual town meeting for May twenty third. I do it at six at like we usually do. Six p.m. at the school. I will second at, that. At Wigley Elementary School. Okay. All right. The move is the motion is made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Julie? Yes. Fred? Yes. Me? Yes. Okay. Uh, second item under old business to discuss the request for proposals for the solar array to be installed at the town offices. I think there's something in yeah, here we go. Something in here, which I uh, only looked at very briefly. I can want me to give an overview. Yeah, please. Um, please. So if you recall, this is funded through a um, MVP action grant. Um, and The grant application that was submitted was to install um, solar panels on the roof at the town office. 
Um, so this is something that that I was working on with Hannah, and um, this is probably the maybe the third or fourth draft that that we've been through. Um, we sent it out to UMass Clean Energy Extension um, and received some feedback and also um, some feedback from Greenfield Solar, I believe. Uh -huh. um, Greenfield Solar Store or? Um, I believe, I'd have to double check, but I believe the email came from Claire, maybe. Oh, okay, then that'd be the Solar Store. Um, yeah. And they provided some feedback. Um, okay. The template that we had used um for the RFP was um the same one that UMass Clean Energy Extension recommends to other people. It was okay. actually from the town of Nantucket, I think. Oh, okay. Um so um this is this is what we have. Um so what we're seeking to do here is to request I put the request out for solar developers to come in and do a couple of things. Mm -hmm. um, so let me just back up about the process. So this is an RFP, not bound by cost, the lowest cost. If this was if this was something, if this was like an IFP, which is an invitation for bids, or something like that, we're bound by the lowest bidder. When we do an RFP, um, we can consider price and non-price proposal considerations. Which is what we're which is what we're aiming to do here. Yeah. Um, so this is going to go out. And we're asking solar developers to submit us proposals. Um, what we're asking them to do, regardless of what um, what proposal they submit, is we're asking them um, whoever is the winning bidder um, would do would enter into it by uh, MOU with the town. Where they would do an engineering study in the roof. First of all, at their expense to make sure that whatever they're proposing, mm -hmm. um, the roof can support. Um, and then, assuming those, assuming there's favorable results from that, then we would enter into a, a, a second agreement with the developer to install the, to actually install the array. Um, what we're asking for through the RFP is proposals for two scenarios, really, and this is six point two. Yeah. Um, two project scenarios. Um, so we had previous, let me just back up for one second. Hannah had some um, proposals um, prior to putting together the grant from a uh, local solar developer um, to try to get a sense of what could, what could be built and, and what the cost would be. Um, so scenario one talks about uh, to install a roof-mounted solar um, photovoltaic energy system and battery storage at WTO's Whitley Town offices. And the goal would be to maximize the financial benefit of the town with a total grant funded project budget of $300,000. So that's about what I'm comfortable with as the, as the price uh, that we should set for proposals. This was around the cost that Hannah received from the proposal. It was a 60, 62, 63 KW system. Um, and that was sized to offset our electricity here. It would, if you think about how the roof looks outside, there's sort of an upper south facing roof. Then there's a lower one, and there's the entrance way where it's kind of block, and there's a smaller one. Mm -hmm. um, so we have extra roof space um, that could be used. Obviously, it's going to be more expensive. It would be beyond what we have for a project budget. Um, if, but scenario two is asking um, for a second proposal that would use the entire roof space, the entire usable roof space at the town offices mm -hmm. and to see what that, uh, see what the financial benefit is and the price. And maybe yeah. maybe yeah. we look at the numbers and say, oh, it makes sense to use the entire roof. Maybe it doesn't. Um, mm -hmm. So. Yeah. I think once we have our assistant town administrator in, um, we can probably get funds for that um, in a, for any additional cost. Yeah. And, um, um, uh, IR Inflation Reduction Act, IRA funds um, can, in you know, all likelihood, contribute a lot to that. So that's, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that it's written so that we get both pieces of information because without right. both pieces of information, we're guessing, right? right. So, um, so that's the way that that's written. 
it's it's meant to be sort of wide open in terms of in terms of what the proposals are. It's sort of like here's the two scenarios we want. Here's the roof. Mm -hmm. Tell us how much it's going to cost and what's the financial benefit to us if we really want to get sort of really simple as yeah. to what we're looking for. Okay, because whatever excess we make here would offset one of the meters in town. That's my understanding. Yeah. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that in previous discussions that Hannah and I had with Eversource, this green box out here, um, I think it's whatever that is, the transformer or something right there, um, is likely not sufficient for whatever. Um, if we were to put, it was not sufficient for the 63 kW system. So it would likely mm -hmm. it would likely be replaced. And they gave us a, a really, a really refined estimate of twenty to fifty thousand dollars. So you know they, mm -hmm. they, they nailed, nailed it down for us. Nailed it down to um so that's why I'm uh, originally the, the the cost for scenario one that I was asking for for quotes for was was closer to 325. Because mm -hmm. um, the, the total grant is around. I think it's around 338, but I wanted to hold back the that mm -hmm. contingency amount. Yeah, so um, contingency right, for that yep. um, because that hookup charge would come this that would be part of the hookup charge. Yeah. Um, so I mean it's it's solar panels, it's battery storage. Um, what's not included right now is any anything that would allow the battery storage to serve as in like an emergency backup. Um to the um to the building uh, we got if you remember we got conflicting responses from various people about that what i what i what i'm hoping to do is that when we have a site so one of the problems is that people don't want to give us advice because they want to bid on the project what i'm hoping to do is during the site visit when interested people are here is to have that discussion and we can always issue an addendum to the rfp saying we want the system to provide you know whatever sort of you know backup to the building if that's the way that we want to go right. um but, but that's one way for us to get so having the storage but not being able to use it as a backup so where's the the, the way that it was explained to me is that the battery storage we would um the battery would essentially discharge to the grid um, when the solar panels weren't weren't uh, were not ready. Oh, that's, that's what it was. So you can. Oh, that's how you sell your to me. You sell. Right. So you can see it then. Essentially, yes. Right. Okay, and then you fill them up. Okay. Yeah. And, um, uh, okay. So. Okay. Understood. And my my understanding is that there's different in term under the smart program. I'm by no means an expert on the smart program, but there's different mm -hmm. adders that you can have. Yeah. based on what equipment you have on site. Yeah. And I think one of there's like a battery adder and things like that. Yeah. That would make the system uh, our financial benefit. It would increase our financial benefit. Mm -hmm. It would be my understanding. Yes, it would definitely increase our financial benefit. Um, the more we can the more we can sell. In terms of timing, I, I mean in terms of in terms of the grant itself, we're a couple of months behind. We said with that we would try to get the bit out. Um, so I'd like to get it out sooner rather than later. Um, yeah, but we still have enough. We have plenty of time in the overall grant picture, right? Um, but oh, yeah, but it's so yeah. better sooner than yeah. later. Yeah, we need to get moving on it. Okay. In terms of you know the proposal here is that we would put it out for thirty days. There's a, a site visit proposed, and then we would need a a. I, I don't remember what we call it here. I'll call it a RFP review team uh -huh. um, that will, you know, get together and look at all the various proposals. So people who have any expertise on that kind of stuff, because I certainly right. don't. Um, I can compare numbers, yeah. but I can't compare. Yeah. Um, I can technical proposals. I can help with that. I don't know that. I I have not had to review. Told in the past. However, face the people I can ask questions of uh, who were in the business. So, yeah, I'm presumably not bidding on it. <laughs> okay. 
I was looking at other at other comments. Some of them are things that I don't really know the answer to. On page 12, you say, um, will our project be behind the meter? I think the answer to that is yes. And do we care about this experience? And I would say yes to that as well. Um, I, I don't think it's going to be a problem. I think most companies have that experience. And because uh, the, so many of the benefits are from having it behind the meter. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did a little bit more research on that. Yeah. And it looks like the uh, the dates are not filled in at this point. It's right. not on this copy. There's a there's a newer one that's under that. Oh, this I, fill, I filled in the dates on that one. Oh, all right. That was that was a recent. Mm -hmm. in the dates recently there. So this would have a due date of April, the end of April, April 26th, okay. which gives us enough time to publish it in the goods and services bulletin. Okay. I've got two copies here, at least on page 13, there's no date filled in. Right. I think that's the, that one has got the thing on the side. That's the older version. Okay. Two, um, two different. Right. Oh. This one, the one that's the newest that's is 316. It's, uh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Well, the issue is March 27th. That's the, within two weeks, right? Yeah. So the way that the goods and services bulletin works is we have to, I would have to advertise. So in, that's the earliest we could advertise is March 27th. Oh, okay. That's the earliest we could release it, I mean. Tab response, and then that. Which is the time when uh, a possible agenda would be about making it be a backup power supply for us. That will probably mean we sell less back to the grid. So that'll you know that'll be a balancing right. sort of thing. Uh, response due to the town by the 26th, vendor selection in May. Okay. It's gonna feel, I mean, it, it seems reasonable. It's going to feel like it's fast, I think. Yes. Because it's happening during that late budget season. And uh, yeah, that's so. Uh, all right. Um, maybe another person. Um, so we could get Paul Newman from the Energy Committee to also look over things you want. Yeah, how many people do you want on this committee to review proposals? Would three be? Three to five, probably. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, all right, well, um, <laughs> I'll nominate Paul. <laughs> um, Can I accept on his behalf? <laughs> there you go. Uh, so, I mean, even, even for he's probably fine. Um, okay, so would you like me to ask him? Or would you, I, I don't know, he might respond better to you, I don't know. Or no. Um, um, I think he, we can. He's he's, he's 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 reviewed it and provide comment. He's been involved in it a little bit. Yeah, he's yeah. I think uh, I think that my guess is he would probably be fine helping out on that. I know he's been working with the UMass folks on some other things as well. Uh, uh, um, having the solar plan for the town. Yeah, and the MVP program is very interested to see how this how this. Um, the results from this because yeah, it's one of the few that they funded. Oh, okay. the solar PV projects that they funded. So, okay, um, try not to mess it up. Does this need a vote? Yeah, we need a vote to okay. issue the RFP. All righty. Um, so, um, why well, don't I'll try a motion, even though I'm the chair, I'll try a motion this time. I move that we. Go forward with the RFP as written with the uh, timetable we just discussed. I second. Okay. Uh, all of those in favor? Julie? Yes. Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Okay, very good. So new business, we have two items. One is to discuss the requirement of the M2A cyber liability insurance protection and the potential upgrades needed to qualify. 
So if I spot that one. Yes, it's M I I A, but it's from the on the agenda. All right. Roman numerals <laughs> one million and two. So the, the confusing part is the M I A A is the sports is the sports organization for Massachusetts. So M I A M I I A is the insurance company. Oh, okay. But, um, All right. So for a couple years now, it's easy. We'll call Maya. Maya has been offering cyber liability insurance to municipalities for a couple years now. Um, and this year, it's going to be um, required that um, municipalities have additional protections that we don't have. Maybe we should do this in executive session. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, well, we don't have to spell I mean, but we have super, specifically. super strong computer security. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we don't have what they want. Yeah. Um, so Amy and I had a, had a call with one of our reps to try to figure out exactly you know what needs to be done. Um, and two of the things that they would like to require, and when we were talking to them about our situation, they were they said, "I'll submit the application anyways, and tell us what you got, and then we'll go from there." So we're waiting to hear back. But two one two of the the two things that they're looking for are MFA, so multi factor authentication, and something called um, EDR endpoint detection and response. Um, I know what MFA is because I get really annoyed when I have to do it. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's so. That's the that's the you, you log in. You have to go. It texts you something, or there's you have to approve on your phone. Yeah, it usually goes to your phone. Or uh, Amy had talked about some people have a badge. You have you can have a badge or something that's oh, okay. to your computer. So you put in your pass. You swipe your badge and then put in your computer. So you, to, to be able to access the device, we don't have any of that currently. Um, we don't, nobody, you know, we don't pay for town devices. We don't pay for people to have cell phones or right. anything like that. So if we would need to implement something like that, it would be an additional cost. I don't know what the cost would be, but it would, it would be an additional cost. Okay. If we were to implement something like that. It doesn't that. have to be done by uh, giving everyone a cell phone, right? It, right, it does not. Right, it does not, yeah. Um, so there's different ways that we would have to do it, but I, I would imagine it would be a cost nonetheless. Yeah. I don't know what that cost is. We, we still need to have those conversations with people much more knowledgeable than, than myself, but I just wanted to have this sort of this brief discussion to let you know about these requirements. And I think that endpoint detection and response, I know even less about, um, but it sounds expensive. I mean, I mean, I know a little bit about it because of, you know, they gave us a frequently asked questions, um, you know, but, but we don't, we don't have a managed network, so to speak. A lot of our, you know, we're not connected to the highway garage. We're not connected to the library. Everybody's sort of, everybody's sort of, got their own little, everybody's sort of on their own. Yeah. They their own their device, own right? Bill, so, to speak. Um, so we're separate. And to me, there's some benefit in that. Um, in terms of if, if something, I'll pick on the highway department, if something were to happen with a highway department computer, it wouldn't take down everything, right? Right. Um, or if someone got ransomware or something, it, it wouldn't take down the entire town. Or if someone hacked into one, they don't get them to everyone. Right. Or the other. Um, to me, that that's, there's sort of, there's a benefit to that, right? It's, yeah. Yeah, physical separation of them. Um, of yeah. the machines. Yeah, which is a which would be about people getting to a particular machine, but how much of what we do is like in the cloud and in a place right. where it's not tied to a particular machine, that would not affect um, that would not be affected by what you just said. It wouldn't be benefited, I should say, by having right those separations. Yeah, in much of what much of the much of the 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 databases that we have are are hosted by vendors. You know, yeah. these, the you know these all the assessors data and the treasury collector data. All of that stuff is 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 hosted. It's third party hosted. Okay, and the uh, then the hosts then take care of the security by right. and large. Um, if you had multi factor authentication, you'd still need to use it to get onto those right databases. Yeah. Um. So. It, the endpoint uh, detection and response seems like 
it would be a, a heavier lift for us in, in maybe a more costly yeah. setup. Yeah, I'm just looking at what Wikipedia says about it. Um, and, and with different, you know, with, with different, with sort of these independent, all, all these independent computers that we have, do we need, you know, EDR software on all of them? And it talks about wanting it to be, you know, continuously monitored and, and managed. And that just to me sounds like dollar signs. Yeah. Um, so, I don't really have any answers. It's just an issue that has come up. Okay. Um, so, so it sounds like they're hedging on the. You absolutely need this to move forward, but it sounds like of the two, if multi-factor authentication is not that expensive to implement, it would probably be a good step. Um, and that if you know the this endpoint detection and response. Um, were to come up, it's likely to be more dollar signs and maybe less necessary, um, given the kind of network we have. I would be interested to hear what Maya has to say about the application and whether um, endpoint detection and response would actually give us a benefit. Yeah, and I I can only imagine that. I mean, we're pretty up to date on yeah. a bunch of our. I will ask if they stuff. if they use that at Smith. Yeah, yeah. Um, I imagine there's communities either in a similar situation, many communities in a similar situation, or worse. Um, oh yeah. In terms of what you know, what they're operating, so we'll have to see what what the pushback is on Maya. Yeah. And I, I don't mean to say that what they're suggesting is not necessarily it, it may not be a bad idea. Um, but I think it's just, yeah, it's a cost, it's really a cost sort of cost benefit analysis or, or, or risk analysis of you yeah. know, what's the ongoing cost and what's the risk of, but of someone we need to find out what these costs are. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we should certainly find out what they are, I guess. Yeah. Um, so that was that once Amy and I got off the call with Maya, that's what we were going to reach out to a couple of people who we get free advice from. Knowledgeable people in the community who do some computer work for us. Uh, we can hopefully give us an unbiased, uh, unbiased okay. All righty. Chief is asking if it's similar to a firewall. I believe that's different. Yeah, I don't think it's a firewall. So to be continued, but I just wanted to. Look. Let the board know about that. Okay. Yeah, sure. we just need some more information. Okay. All right. Um, the next item under new business is to discuss the fiscal year 24 capital project recommendations from the Capital Improvement Planning Committee and potential sources of funding, uh, CLFRF, for example. So that one. So all we have this. Uh, that one. This document here it should be in the meeting of the bill. I didn't know. Or is it in the. Uh, I, I, I might have. Oh, is this one of the ones? It might have been done. I'll bring it up here. Hold on one second. Okay. You printed everything you sent me. Yeah. Or maybe she didn't send you that. Maybe I didn't send it to you. Okay. Could be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was having problems with the engine three kill. What does it look like to you? Um, it's the screen table here. It may have been something that I did after. Okay. I think the the RFP. Is thick and there's essentially three copies of it. Yeah, I didn't see it in there, but there are three copies. Question is, is it obvious to do that? All right, <clears throat> there we go.
At least the computer should be networked. <laughs> <laughs> Is this, this look like it? Yes. It's right in front of the number nine select for liaison updates. And it was at the end of the, the um, like the third copy of the RFP. Yeah. yeah. All right. Not at the end of that one, it's in the big packet. This is okay. I got it. You got it? Okay. All right. Priority A, urgent, are flooring replacement in the pre-K restrooms, window and chimney repair at the library, electrical system safety upgrades at the library, new dump truck and plow, highway department, new pickup truck for the highway department, new tasers, body cameras, and software, Christian Lake Culvert Infrastructure. And then priority B, replacement communication pagers for the fire department. Cataloging town maps and plans. And priority C, uh, install double pane, double lane batting cages at the athletic fields and install surveillance system at the highway garage transfer station. And then take no action on air conditioning at the elementary school. Okay. Well. So that's the report. That's their report. Um, and these, um, now some of these like the highway department uh, truck and plow and pickup truck, uh, or dump truck and plow, pickup truck. Those have money that we've been saving away, I think, in one of the. Um, uh, oh, there's a little bit lost in the vehicle stabilization. Vehicle stabilization. Yeah. There's only around 40000 left. Yeah. Okay. Um, and my understanding is that the the Ford F-150 has an electric version, but maybe the Ford F-550 does not. That's my understanding. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And do you happen to know if the um, if the 85000 estimated cost is for the electric version? It is, yeah. I asked Keith okay. to update, update that. And one other, one other item that needs to be updated is the Christian Lane Fulman final design. Uh -huh. um, the original number that what I had there is not even close to sufficient. Oh, what I had here was what was left on um, what was left for the, the soil boring in the in the to do whatever was left under the grant. I got an updated estimate um, and I'm not comfortable really putting it forward for for, for town funds, but it's 124,000. Oh, only okay. after six different. Yeah, okay. so. Okay. Okay, um, I just fell out of my chair when I got the revised. And, and that's just for engineer. design. Yeah, it's to bring it to final design. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you can say that again. It is 124. <laughs> you can <know, laughs> $124,700 to bring it to final design. So, so that's really through design and permitting, but you know the permitting is permitting is not that. But steep. I, I mean, it, it's probably if you say it's ten to twelve percent. If engineering costs are typically ten to twelve percent, then maybe that's how they determined their. <laughs> wow. Um. So. Sorry. That's a correction. He says taser body cam cost is 
Oh, so it's uh, five thousand less than what's right here. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, we have to talk about how that. Yeah, that could be a subscription. Yeah, so I'd say yeah, that's not such a different yeah. number at all. Yeah. Um, and then there were some discussions about um, um, the surveillance systems at the transfer station highway garage. Yeah. About whether that can be done, assuming that a lot of changes are going to take place in that in the near future, that right. maybe something a little bit or a lot less expensive could be installed uh -huh. there. Like, you know, there's really cheap. You there know, are some ways some to monitor areas right. now. Um, yeah. and then, so, so put a better system in when right final building gets designed. So that's uh, I think it's a discussion that sort of I think the select board and, and finance committee might want to have, or even the select board might want to have that. It's, it's just might be more cost effective to do something motion activated mm -hmm. or something, you know. Okay, so I'm just ready to know that we might consider a lower cost system and upgrade when a more permanent. Yeah. Uh, uh, I can't remember my plan, but a more permanent uh, uh, settlement is sort of happens for the highway rush. Yeah. So this report is these were the costs that the, um, yeah. I shouldn't say that because I changed the trucks, but most of these were the costs when the, when it was, when the report was voted on by the CFTC. So some of these will change as we go through the process. Like, yeah. Um, well, hopefully they won't all change by factor of six. Let's hope not. Yeah. Yeah, and Jim went down. So appreciate that. We wait long enough to go down more. That's how it works, right? Right. That's right. Cool. Right. Okay. Um, so our discussion tonight is mostly kind of what do we, what do we think? Because this is really a decision that's kind of made both with finance committee. I mean, we are not the final word on this unless we decide to use right. so CLFRF funds yeah, and for we, any of them. Yeah, we're the final word on CLF. We're, yeah, so th th that's the one we can we can decide and we can take basically take some of these things off the list if we decide to use if we want to, yeah. CLFRF. Um, it, and just the conversations that I that I expect to happen at the at upcoming finance committee meetings are there are certain Sort of one time items, one, one yeah, that, that are in the budget right now. Um, like the South County MS ambulance capital assessment yeah. is, you know, 46, whatever, $46,000. Um, there's a one time, they call it employee separation costs in the school budget right now, $20,000. Mm -hmm. Um, there's, um, you know, there's, there's the request from the conservation. Uh, commission for the ten thousand dollars for the for the agent the shared conservation agent, which we're not sure if that's going to happen or not. That's best you know, it's also an, an estimate, right? right. And, and is that something that we want to raise tax dollars on? If we're not really sure, we're going to use it, or are there you know are there other oh, sources? I'm pretty of sure they're going to make that happen. Yeah, I think that there's enough uh, enough towns that really need a conservation agent. I think that's going to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. That would um, probably become an ongoing expense, so it should go right budget. Right. So that, yeah. So I would say, um, but some of the other one time expenses, like for example, the, the separation cost of the school, I guess I mean, there is some logic there that, well, if that's in the school's budget, then, then that's not an ongoing cost. Then, well, the budget the year after that will be whatever the budget is. The percent increase will look different, but. Uh, I'm not sure 20,000 is a big enough number to make a big difference, but if it made a difference to people um, who are thinking about it, like this is really a one-time expense, we shouldn't put it in the budget, then that would certainly be yeah. a candidate. As far as the ambulance uh, goes, there, there are a couple of funds that are sort of vestigial from when we had an ambulance. Or are those funds? And, and I don't even I don't have that in front of me to to know how much yeah. it is. But are those the kind of funds that can we use for this ambulance? Since we don't have our own ambulance anymore. Uh, so there 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 is a leftover ambulance stabilization yeah. fund, right? 
which to me sounds like we, we'd have right. to check the specific purpose of, of the fund. And there, there was some other ambulance fund in there also. Mm -hmm. Again, I didn't hear. There's some, yeah, there's some collection. There's some left over collection, ambulance billing collection. Oh, back what people yeah, right. yeah, these, yeah. So there's smaller amounts that. Yeah. But I, I would say any, anything that can be used from those, given that we, we, don't, really we don't anticipate having an ambulance right. again right. in the near future. But that, yeah, that will make a dent, but not. Yeah, I don't know how big, but you'll find out. Yeah. I forgot I didn't bring the, the latest special funds report. Yeah. If I remember it, someone is sending five to ten thousand dollars between the two funds. Yeah. But about ten thousand dollars, that's better than that's better than nothing. Better than nothing. Yeah. yeah. In terms of the the CLFRF monies, we have about thirty. Uh, 360,000, uh, sorry, 260,000 left to obligate. Okay. So unobligated is 260,000. And this is what, change. where's the, this, where's the deadline on that? Um, so we need to obligate funds by December 31st of 2024. Okay. So that's just under two years. So likely we can, We'll have FY24 and right. part of So we were to think of this as <clears throat> half this year, half next year, that would not be an unreal, unreasonable yeah. way to think of it. Right. So if we think of about 130K. Yeah. And I mean, if that's, it, it may be easier to say that's what we want to spend and then we can just. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pick whatever one. You know, I mean, we obviously couldn't fund everything with all these because. Right, right. In fact, if we, if we picked up that Christian Lake culvert, then that's that's it. That's our vote for the year. Out, yeah. It's been all on that one thing. Just, just to comment about the double length batting cages, that should be CPA eligible. There was no application submitted this year. Um, but. Okay. I mean, recreation. I mean, it, I think they can. I, I think it's a matter of nobody, you know, nobody from the nobody a, to apply for it. And, and the police <laughs> tankers looking like it will be an ongoing expense. It, it could be a subscription service, yeah. Right. So, so that would not, right. Mm -hmm. So I would also think it yeah. could come out of this. It would um, take out the 55 and right. it would be whatever a year. Yeah. Right. And then yeah. it that that will continue. And that'll be a budget that, line. That'll be a budget line. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, in the future. Um as far as the vehicle stabilization funds, there's about forty thousand left. What's do you know what the timetable is for the next police vehicle that will which is well, we've generally been using yeah. that. Two, I'm guessing three years, two years, could well, be less. Um, it's not sure. I assume, I, 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 say it's I, I think years. that the money for the vehicle that's on order or the electric, the, yeah, the, the hybrid, the, that, that is already out of that fund. It is, yeah. Right, because that was done town meeting last year. Yeah, yeah I double checked that the other day. Because I, I would anticipate and we've been putting twenty five thousand a year into that fund, and I see no reason to think we would not do that again this year. So even though it is dwindling, we've got two to three, two or three years uh -huh. to build that back up again. Yeah, for a police vehicle that we can use some of that, or anticipate using some of that for some of the highway department. Right, it won't cover the whole thing. Right? Yeah, so that. Uh... The 25k that we put away in the vehicle stabilization isn't really earmarked for one vehicle or another, is it? No, it, yeah, it's for and, vehicle. and really, and but realistically, we should put away more than that to cover at least now. It looks like uh, the, the general anticipation on that was for police vehicles, just to, oh, okay, to, to level now. It hasn't, it's not earmarked for that, but right. to level out, we know that those always 
okay. come up on a regular schedule. I see. And to keep from having big hits in those years. Right. Yeah. I've listed 25, FY25. Does that sound right, Jim? Yes. Yeah. So that's next, and so next, year, next budget year. Next budget year for, okay, so we, can't, we don't want to take that down very much. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Is this the Hi. Uh, this, Hatfield Historical Society? No, no this you. is the Waitley Board of Selectmen. You're welcome to stay. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> is it at the Waitley Council? I don't know anything about the Hatfield. Uh, it's so the, uh, I, my guess is that, yeah, there's a seven o'clock thing at the Waitley Town Hall. Which are there, but, Kinsley Brothers? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, the town hall is That's on Chestnut Plain Road. Across from the Waitley Inn. Across from the Waitley Inn, yeah. It's here. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's I mean, I'm just saying yes. confusing. Everybody confuses it all the time. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Sure you don't want to stay. Do you know where that's sir? Yeah, yeah. across from the Waitley Inn? Yes. Yeah. 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 All right, thank you. You're welcome. I don't see why he doesn't want to stay. <laughs> I know we're putting on a pretty good show tonight. <laughs> All right, they're not going to be talking about dump trucks and plows. Okay. All right. Um, do we know much about the electrical system and safety upgrades at the library? Is that just because the building was yeah. wired in 1910? It, it, yeah, I think there's very limited receptacles in the yeah. library. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they've all been yeah. it over. Yeah. <laughs> the one has and their extension cord running across the floor. Yeah. It, yeah. Things I don't want to say on yeah. camera about probably the, <laughs> the setup. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then some of this has to do with um I have a question. I think it was wrong place. Okay, you look at my GPS yeah, this is the town office. That's bigger than I saw it. Yeah, yeah. 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 put it like 197. 194, 194 Chestnut Plain Road. Yeah. Across from the Waylian. It's like five minutes oh, from here. Yeah, it's right across from the Waylian. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. All right. She doesn't know what she's missing here. Maybe I should put a sign up. No. There's there's a whole bunch of people. Oh, right. Okay. Well, nobody wants they'll, to hear about it'll them. be like in 10 minutes, they'll stop coming. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We were um, looking, talking about the electrical system upgrades at oh. the library. Right. And oh, yeah. Window and chimney repair restoration were both library things. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Part of the electrical system upgrades is. Uh, they want to put in electric baseboards in the, in the restrooms because there's no there's no heat uh -huh. um, in the restrooms, and they want to put in the uh, surge protect uh, surge protector on the main to protect the electronics, like the, yeah. the electronics on the lift and the computers and things like that. Yeah. Um, and then the the other one, the wind windy the window and chimney uh, repair restorations. So since we since the town has access to the the bucket truck now. He's been doing some aerial inspections of the buildings. Uh -huh. So when he was looking at the, he was looking at the upper parts of the library. Uh -huh. you know, the the windows they, they need to be some of them need to be reglazed. You know, there's be more caulking. Sort of the wood needs to be, you know, scraped and painted and things like that. And the chimney could be, you know, repointed and stuff like that to yeah. preserve small amounts to preserve the building and to put off much larger replacements. There was a big discussion, um, and emails. About this, whether it was CPA eligible or not, um, I oh. think our understanding, my understanding, is that it's not CPA eligible. CPA does not pay for the regular maintenance of buildings. Okay. Um, if they were to do a full, assuming the windows there are historic, um, you know, they would do sort of the full scale, re uh, re yeah, rehabilitation. Yeah. You know, historic rehabilitation of the windows. Yeah. CPA can pay for rehabilitation, but not replacement. Right. right. So this is more of just sort of yeah. typical repair. So uh, CPA. Maintenance, essentially, repair and maintenance. So. Communication uh, pagers are 
um, the communication figures run off the old um, the old uh, radio network that the uh -huh. first responders oh. used. So they replaced all the all the radios, but now they can replace the pagers before that. Okay. Before that system comes offline. So. Um, okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna add some numbers here. Um, okay, so I think you've got a bottom line of three fifty six forty five for everything there. Yeah, I think we're looking at at a minimum taking out the tasers because that should probably go into the main budget as an annual expense rather than this as a one shot. Um, you have to take out the Christian Lane Colbert design simply because that number is not a realistic number. Yeah. Uh, take out the batting cages because that would be a C should be a CPA yeah. project and the surveillance system because we want to go with something cheaper to yeah. because the building Will likely not be there hopefully in several years so that takes 105 off the bottom line roughly to begin with and the great bulk of that is in the two pilot department vehicles okay. yeah well if we're aiming for something like 130k we could do Pickup truck, the two library items, and then one of the uh, priority B projects, uh, and we'd still be under 130. Say we took the the price here of the two is the 15k, replace the communication pages. So if I add 15k to that, that I get one uh, twenty one eight forty five. I I would say. If it fits in the head with other numbers, I would do the F 550 because the likelihood is that that will be available and can be purchased. Whereas it's a test to be encumbered. I, I know, but that the pickup truck, the likelihood is we go on order and then it'll be a year or two before we need to take delivery in any case. Well, we need to pay to actually pay for it. Right, but you just have to encumber the funds. You don't have to have right. it paid it in your seat. Well, I know, but then, uh, I just feel like it's it's energy forward. You know, it's an electric. No, I, 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 I really I, like that with this CLFRF funds. I have no doubt that we will be funding it at the point where we need to pay for it. But at this point, It'll be a year or two before we actually have to pay for it. So I wouldn't want to encumber the funds that just have them sitting there unused when we can use them okay. to, so you, to pay for okay. something. So you're saying that the the uh, F-150 truck is not something you would order now? No, so it's something I would order now, but we would no, likely okay. not be able to take delivery okay. for well and and, and therefore and therefore year. pay for it. Okay. Yeah. And it'd be, Getting on the you know whatever the waiting list or putting an order. I don't think it's going to be a two year waiting list. That the the last Brian the last I heard was it was running a year to two yeah, on the F one fifty. I've heard any recently. I, I, I have people who have put in a while back and haven't gotten one of them. Right. It's not going to be a matter of capacity. The capacity, I think. I mean, given how long it's taken them, yeah. well, has taken the police vehicle, the, all the electric vehicles, especially these larger ones, are running on long, very long lead times. Well, uh, yeah, you're looking it up. People are saying a variety of things three to six months, 190 days. Uh, uh, is it still taking, is sport still taking orders? Uh, yeah, at one point that can keep them they suspended even yeah. taking orders. Well, I okay. I, 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 just, I, just, hate to, I just hate tying up the, the funds for something that we're not taking delivery on when we could well, use the funds and take delivery on something. Because 
It's a difference of fifteen thousand dollars between the two. Two things, and yet the money will come from one pot or another. It's just a question of when. No, I mean, it, I, I don't think it matters. I mean, whenever you, you, if there's a time delay for buying an electric vehicle, then it doesn't matter which pot of money you're using. There's going to be a delay, right? But you uh, encumber the funds if we're using CLFRF. You appropriate the funds if you're using tax money for it. But either of those can be done, mm -hmm. and then that starts a clock. And you and you go from there. I don't think it matters yeah, which ultimately. fund it comes from. Ultimately, it's, it doesn't. No. Yeah, and I, I guess it's just my statement of support for going with an electric vehicle that I want to put that put that on. Us. Yeah, sure. Do we have um, charging stations on order for the electric truck? Yeah, we don't have. I don't think we have one right now. Uh, I think in the package that. The last time we talked about this was a while back, the charger came with. Oh, and okay. they installed the charger okay. wherever you told them the charger to, okay. to install it. Yeah. And we're talking about police vehicles for next year, so we really don't want to. Go deeply, if at all, into the vehicle stabilization. Yeah, that's yeah. It's gonna come from somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Somewhere. I know. Um, anyway, that's my that's my first thought about this, and, and part of it is just coming up with numbers that add, add up to somewhere around and less than one hundred thirty thousand. We can pick different things that will add up to about the same amount. But I, I like making the statement about the electric vehicles. So that's something that we can decide on and we don't have to, you know, it, it, it won't be delayed until May to have a decision made. The decision could be made earlier. And I think the, the library repairs are probably well overdue. Uh, that's. But do we want to have a motion on this and, and appropriate the funds or uh, think about it more? Yeah. And when do we? We can think about it and go and vote next time. Sure. Only two weeks away. Um, we have another, Andy Schrader sent another request for funds. Oh, but there's a non capital. Request. Okay. So, I mean, CLFRF monies could be, you know, right. it's, it's requested to be put on the board, but it didn't go through the capital process. Right. It's not really capital. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I would be okay with letting us sleep on this, so to speak, and put this on the agenda for next time. And then maybe we'll hear more information from people's, you know, people's opinion on what, uh, what things would be most appropriate for CLFRF um, monies. Does that, does that uh, sound like it? Well, uh, let me just look at a couple of things. So the total, when you take the two trucks out, the total requested is around 60,000. Yes. The two trucks. Yeah, just for now, taking the, taking the trucks out of the equation. Taking the trucks out, what is 60,000? The total requested from the, the floor replacement, window chimney repair, electrical system, communication pagers, and cataloging town maps and plans. Okay, so you left out the Christian and Culbert. Yeah, because that, yeah. that, that's that's not yeah, that's way that, that's way under what's gonna be needed. We're gonna need a different <laughs> it's way over, it's way over what we anyway. Uh yeah. it, the, the estimate is way over what we. What we there's no to, reason to encumber twenty one thousand right. against one hundred and twenty something thousand. Right, I agree. I I just changed the number to one hundred twenty four k, and yeah. so I have a. But I, 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 I yeah. so you're just not including oh. right. So we've got okay. sixty, rough, roughly sixty being requested. I would I'd like to add the twenty, 
for the employee termination. I think that is the kind of thing we should take out of this. That's not listed on the capital. That's no, right. You know, it's something we haven't discussed yet. Right, Brian right. mentioned it before. Yeah. <clears throat> and the ambulance we want to revisit when we see what the other funds are. I assume that if there are if got other funds that we can use that are ambulance related, that those would involve a town meeting warrant to transfer those funds. I don't. I wouldn't anticipate. Yeah, we, I wouldn't anticipate a problem getting that approved, but that that would be the process. We would need to. Yes, anything in those accounts would our our money's held and further appropriations required. Yeah. Um. So why don't that would hold that ambulance assessment in abeyance until our next meeting to see how much there is in possibly available in those other accounts to offset. Uh -huh. But if we're looking for 135,000, that's 60 in, in non-truck projects, 20 in that, so looking at 50, I, I would say we could appropriate or I, uh, I'll pay yeah. 55 of the 85 from the pickup. I um, I would like to be able to think about it more. Okay. I, I feel like it's kind of too rushed. We're kind of putting out, you know, possible things that's hard to compare one to the other. So this is in an Excel file, right? So we could have the Excel version of this. Yes. And, yep. And, and, and this is also sent to the, to the finance committee yeah. as well. So they'll yeah. probably have some thoughts. Yeah. Um, so it'll, it'll be a discussion at the, at the the finance committee will look at this and probably start trying to consider yeah. things as well, even though they won't, they don't need to vote on it. There's yeah. no votes on these official votes until probably end of March, April. April. It's definitely in April, probably the second meeting in April. So, okay. yeah, but that, but actually, at our taking care of this would help would make their work easier if we right. take but somebody yeah. off their plate. And if, and if they, if they know that we're Inclined to spend about one hundred thirty thousand right. dollars. That will be the the main information yes, they need. They may not. Helpful. They may not care which items it is. Yeah. Yep. So okay. that's the report from the capital improvement. Okay. Yeah. Julie, do you have something you're trying to say there? No. No. Okay. Nodding. Okay. All right. Uh, so we'll be ready to. <gasps> vote on that next next time okay all right um i see it says liaison updates but i also see in our packet there's something from amy now did that's is that something that i know you that's something i just it, mentioned you yeah you mentioned it a moment ago but i didn't see it on the agenda as an item is that something it was just for the clfrf discussion to know that oh okay Request in addition to what the yeah. capital oh, okay. committee has. Okay, plus, and so that's not the same thing as the cataloging town maps and plans. Uh, no, this is the rec, uh, code of Waitley. This would be finishing a project that's been project. going on. I think it started even before I was here. Yeah. The town clerk was trying to get all the bylaws codified, the company yeah. called general code. Um, and it was, it, if I remember correctly, there's just been fits and starts with it. Yeah, based on the company, based on our legal counsel, and it's just and based on workload of the town clerk, and right. it's just dragged. At some point, there was money left in an account around nineteen thousand dollars, I believe, uh -huh. that the town had appropriated to do it. That money got turned over to free cash. It oh. looks like back yeah. in FY eighteen, uh, okay, um, and the project is just sort of stalled. Uh, sure. It would be nice to have our general bylaw. It would be nice to have all of our bylaws. In a codified format online that people yeah. can access because currently when you say codified format, what does that mean as opposed to what we have now? It's not code. Um it's not up to code. Yes, <laughs> it's certainly <laughs> um it's just it's everything is chapter section, everything's organized. So oh okay. um, and they're not right now, they are not. It's like a bunch of papers that somebody like threw on the floor papers and papers in a binder and then. They, they put them together, the pages might not even be in the right order. 
Okay, there's been there's been additions and updates that. Uh, okay, it's, it just gets smacked on the end or something. Yeah. Yeah, okay, we have right. we have a preliminary draft of it. Um, it's just it just yeah. needs to be finished. Needs to be finished. Okay, that sounds like a worthy a worthy cause. Would that do you think fit in the category A, B, or C? I feel like it would be in B. If it was oh. a capital item. If it were a capital item. Yeah, I think so. Um, good. Like the other uh, the other maps and planning. But that's, I, I'm like looking for something rough here. Yeah. It certainly but, doesn't sound like it's a no action or a, or a C. It's not, it doesn't seem to me to be similar to those. Yeah, I can't speak for that committee, but that sounds likely where they would want to put it. Okay. It's necessary, but it's not. The town's got to buy for it. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. Anybody have anything more to say about that before we go on to liaison updates? No. Nope. No. Yeah. Okay. So liaison updates. Um, why don't we start with Julie? Do you have anything you want to chime in there with? I think you had a presentation. Was that since our last meeting? I had a presentation. No, you went to the, the, the Conway School folks. Had a presentation. Ah, uh, okay. that was probably three or four weeks ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, they they did a nice job. Um, they yeah they presented to uh, colleagues at the Conway School and some folks that they had brought in who are affiliated with the Conway School and do environmental work locally and throughout the state. And they did a presentation. They did a very nice job. Um, that's about all I have to say for that. I was I attended the water uh, department meeting last week and um, heard a very good presentation from, ooh, shoot, Kristen. Uh, they uh, did a survey of what kinds of things need to be updated and um, taken care of in, to keep Waitley afloat, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it was a great presentation. It took about an hour and it was very informative. And they are struggling with their, um, with their finances. They're trying to figure out how money comes in, how it goes out, how to balance the whole thing. They're working with it. Okay. Fred, do you have anything you want to? Uh, just I got a note from Brian today that we're setting up a meeting for sometime next week for the uh, feasibility study for the highway department garage. So we'll have a meeting with some, with hopefully several, <laughs> hopefully several meetings with people. Proposals for doing these feasibility study. Okay, all right, that sounds good. Um, mm -hmm. In the last two weeks, we've not had a board of oversight meeting for South County Senior Center, but we did uh, get together briefly to take a look at the church that they're trying to renovate in Deerfield, and uh, they, you know, want, we're basically looking for any input on uh, that. There's the status is there. They got money for a. Uh, feasibility study, which they're going to start doing any minute now uh, to see if that space can be renovated and at what cost to be kind of a safe and comfortable place for a senior center slash, I want to say slash community center because we've also been talking about um, a senior center that can serve kind of greater than just the seniors of a town, but be um, more of a community center. Um, and uh, that, you know, we, we didn't make any decisions. We were just there to tour and it looks like it's got enough square feet, but it's not clear that the, the some of the asbestos has been removed, not all of it. Um, the mold is still an issue. There's a whole lot of issues with the building and there's some structural issues. Um, so we'll find out more when they get that feasibility study done and uh, kind of get an assessment of what needs to 
happen and what that cost is going to be. And then we'll have some better ideas. Uh, in the meantime, the BOO does have a meeting coming up at the end of March where we're going to kind of talk about alternatives because we can't really count on that and we haven't really committed to it anyway. So that's it for, for anything, my liaisons. Uh, Ryan, how about you? So, um, Haydenville Road Reconstruction Project. Um, we had uh, a virtual meeting with MassDOT on Monday, and Keith and I met with the project engineer today uh, in person. Um, last that I spoke about this, I was a little bit uh, perturbed that the, <laughs> the, the, the uh, advertising date for the project was moved back um, to about federal fiscal year 26. Um, I feel better about it now after having having that uh, meeting with MassDOT. Um, I think it is the right it is the right decision. A lot of it is going to be driven by when the when the final engineering plans are going to be done. Uh -huh. um, so we really can't do a lot with it right away until we have hundred percent plans accepted okay. by um, accepted by MassDOT. So okay. that's really what's driving um, the shift back. Um, Really, um, so construction now would be of spring of 2026, um, and we would advertise the project in October of 2025. Um, so it didn't delay the project too much, um, but the problem is the federal fiscal year um, starts. When is it? October starts October 1st, I believe. Um, so we're sort of like right at that date of. Do we push really hard and try our best to get through the Article 97 process as fast as we can and advertise in Federal Fiscal Year 25? And there's not really a good argument to do that. Or do we have a little bit more conservative of an estimate and then just go into to 26? Um, the difficulty that it creates is that um, now the, the TPL, the Transport, Franklin Transportation Planning Organization, needs to find a project to fill um, the the that money in, in 2025 federal fiscal year 2025. I think for us for Waitley, it's it's I think it's the right it's the right decision. Um, okay. So hopefully they can make that work. There hasn't been a TPO meeting since since then, so um, I'm not sure what the discussions are going to be. Um, the meeting today was was helpful, um, and that's why we need to we need to pick decorations for Haydenville Road today. Um, tonight, hopefully, um, we had some good conversations with the engineer. One of our requests in the past has been to really look at the Article 97 impacts and reduce those as much as possible. That was a joint request from Whitley and Northampton, and they, they've done that. Um, they're not able to completely eliminate them, so we still need to go through the, the legislative process. Um, but changes that they've made are, are going to reduce the, the footprint of the project. It's going to reduce the oh. number the, the number of easements that we need and the amount of easements that we need. Oh, um, okay. and which hopefully makes it easier to get those. Yeah, and they were able to address. Keith had met with many of the, the landowners, and they were able to address address the three concerns that landowners mentioned to Keith, which was good. Um, so it's reducing tree clearing. It's reducing some of the Create some of the excavation of the slopes that need to be um, that would have need to be done. Um, so, so it, it's there were some really good improvements from twenty five percent design to seventy five percent that I think, at least I think that Keith and I are very pleased with. I think the town should be pleased with them as well. Um, so there needs to be some retaining walls on the project because there's there's some slopes that that. As everybody knows, um, so because there are article, because it's Article ninety seven land, a lot of times um, for projects you if you see them right, they'll just clear out and they'll just they'll clear back as far as they need to make the slope that they need right yeah. instead of using walls and stuff. But in an effort to really reduce the impacts on the Article ninety seven land, um, they're going to be using some retaining walls. And what they're proposing to do um, is something called um, a soil nail wall. Okay. And that's this the green one. This page right here. Oh that has the what there's oh soil nail wall with right. yeah. concrete nozzle finish right. and there's one with exposed. So what they're proposing 
And then there's this fancy one that looks like some, you know, a cliff from the some part other part of the United right. States. Um, so what we're actually picking from, or what they've asked to pick from, is the first four pictures, the blocks here. So what's going to happen is they're going to have a soil nail wall um, that's going to hold back the hold back the slope, mm -hmm. and then there's going to be um, they call it the PMCG wall, which I don't understand, but it's one of these types. I don't understand what the abbreviation mm -hmm. stands for. Um, that's going to be in front of it. So there's going to be that that wall. There's going to be gravel for for some type of gravel type for for drainage. And then there's going to be this, I'll just call it a block wall um, that's facing the road. So you don't you don't ever see the soil, uh -huh. the soil nail wall. So you don't see this thing. You don't see no. this. Um, and we definitely don't want to see this. Um, yeah. I was going to say that looks but, like like a wall that's just got lots of moss growing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which it might well end up being looking like that. Yeah, I mean, that could happen over time. Right. So what they were asking the town is to decide from these first four, oh, either the limestone, the cobblestone, the wood stone, or the colored ledge stone. It's like the it's like the paint committee that was formed for the talk. <laughs> um, so they, he did say that a lot of communities do the colored ledge stone because um, the white is sort of. Not and it's not gonna stay white. It's not gonna stay white. And yeah. the white is sort of dark. Yeah, it's it's not sort of a natural color that exists out it's there. Here, yeah. Um, it looks and like a mall. The cobbles on picture is really dark, it's hard to tell. Yeah. But the, it does. I mean, this particular one looks like there's stuff growing out of the wall, right? Or is that the colored ledge stone? Yeah, the colored ledge yeah, stone. Yeah, some shrubs that are, or is that like the wall is really in two layers? The there wall's two space? layers, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, he asked if there was going to be shrubs growing on above it, and he said no. So, okay. I, I assume we could plant some if we wanted to, but right, it'll be after the project is over. Is there a cost difference between the different uh, blocks? Um, no. Um, okay. It, it's funny, actually. Um. They must be like all within budget if there's a difference. If right. Again, they're actually saving it because we're able to uh, pull back on the on the excavation. They're actually saving a. I, I know exactly what it was. But he said significant amount of money doing it this way. Um, yeah. Uh, the most expensive one is the fake, the fake cliff. Yeah. Um, that's what we can do with that. Then. So that was. I was surprised. That's two hundred seventy dollars a square foot to do with the cliff. You say the fake cliff. That's this one. Oh, that one. Yeah, the fake rock there. Oh, the sculpted and colored shot creek finish. Yeah, I guess that's a nicer way to put it. Okay. The soil nail wall itself, I think, was one fifty. Just that um, with the the shot creek nozzle finish. Um, I think that I think he said it added like. I think that was 200, yeah. um, but doing it, um, we put in the, the PMC UL well was only 170 square feet, uh, one, yeah. $170 per square foot. So it's actually cheaper to, oh, okay. to put the nail wall and then to put um, this wall in front of it. I have okay. no idea why. So we're actually getting- for the, I like the colored ledge stone. Yeah. Well, I would entertain a motion on that. Unless Fred, you want to discuss no, that? No, no. I, I move that we go for the colored ledge stone form liner. Second. All right. All those in favor? Julie? Yes. Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yes. All right. Whew. That was an important decision to get on our plates. Okay. You have more? I think. Oh, yeah. I guess so. Uh, personnel policy update. Um, we had our initial meeting with um, our consultant, um, H HRS, I think HRS, um, and we talked a little bit about the process. So uh, that will be moving forward. The personnel committee will be involved um, to provide some feedback along with department heads and then um, eventually come into the select board um, for some discussions and then to adopt the policies. Um, East Whitley School Reuse Project. Um, just that that project 
is going to be starting soon, as as I understand it. Um, so people should see some some yeah. activity there, some work there. Um, in Hurley Heat Field Accessibility Project, um, the rest the restrooms have been demoed, um, and they're doing plumbing and electrical work now. And then once they once they finish that up, then they can start building it back up. So that is moving forward. Um, so I know Keith went to the Conservation Commission this past Wednesday, I believe, to get approval of the of a redesigned drainage system because the the previous pavement was was just blew the project budget. Yeah. It was essentially our project budget, a oh. total project budget that we had would uh, would have been the cost to do the the previous pavement there. Um, and one thing that I just wanted to mention, um, and I emailed this to the board, the yeah. even called a little while back, MassDOT. Um, gave us a grant of technical assistance sort of out of nowhere. It was called the FORRRWD program. It was about um, roads with, with high lane departure crashes. Um, and for some reason, Christian Lane qualified um, so that we got a free you know, road safety analysis from, the, from an engineer. Um, and they they put a memo together and, and uh, provided some recommendations. Most of those had to do with signage. Um, so they're providing us free signage, um, oh. a number of different free signage. So you'll see some, some different signs that are going up there. Um, some some uh, clear area markers. There's some, some items in the, what's considered the clear area of the roadway, so the side of the road where there's some items that um, uh -huh. we're gonna have some, uh, I, I would imagine that there's some reflective, you know, some reflectors or things like that. Um, so, and then we're getting a, a speed, another speed feedback sign um, that they recommend that would be faced in the other direction. And that's yeah. currently there. Yeah. Um, but it's, I think it just sort of fell in our lap. So oh, um, yeah. that's well, good. That. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. All right. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, can I go back just for a second about one question on the CLF? I'm looking at the list you gave us of the projects that have been approved. Yep. There looks like there's about six, just under six thousand dollars of money that's been obligated, but was never spent on projects that have been completed. What is the procedure for reallocating that money? I think we would just. Oh, I would want to double check with the. I yeah, I'm just saying just double one. check. Yeah, the, oh. the the larger one is a forty seven hundred dollars. I think we would vote that money back from the school. I think as a matter of process, we would just you would just right. want to vote that money back. Okay, or, or at least recognize. Yeah. Okay, because I, I just want to make sure when we're considering how much money we have left that that yeah yep. that's going to factor in itself. that that that's going to factor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of them you say is you know complete for an email from the schools last year, and that was forty seven hundred of it. Yeah. So maybe maybe the next meeting we'll yeah, get yeah. figures and yeah and vote that back in. Okay. But I just want to make sure we <laughs> we really know how much we're. Well, we don't want to give them back one penny. That's the oh, right? We want That's to try right. to spend it down to a <laughs> penny. Okay, but from that it looks like we've got uh, two hundred sixty-six thousand instead of two hundred sixty thousand to spend. Okay. All right. Well, you have any unanticipated items? Do not. Okay. Then um, at this point, uh, we're going to enter an uh, executive session. And the plan is we will come back into regular session. Uh, the item number 13 on the agenda is what we'll return to. And it's about uh, the uh, employment agreement between the town of Waitley and the chief of police and a discussion of the police budget. Uh, in the executive session, though, I think we have to turn off recording, right? Yeah, but we, we have, have to, to we have turn to off the cable. We need to do but a roll we have call. to do official roll right. Call. We have to get in there officially. So that's the plan, at least. So uh I move that we enter into executive session pursuant to Mass General Act, Chapter 30A, Section 21.
A2, second. Okay, um, all those in favor, Julie? Yes. Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Go okay. back to the request. And then keep going. Okay. So we're back to recording. We're going to pause here <laughs> to get us back on, uh, back on the air. All the people are waiting by their couches. Right? Yes. <laughs> oh, waiting for the outcome of the executive session. <clears throat> Surprised there were a couple of them in the finance committee waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could see how many people were watching. We're recording or are we paused? We are recording. Okay, we are, yeah, we're recording there, but we're we're happily pausing. <sighs> So that we can have it on the air, fully functional cable. All right, and the like audio is there. there. And the audio is there. Have audio. Okay, does that look like it's done? We are recording. Okay, we great. All right, we're back from executive session. Thanks for your patience. Um, and the first item on our return to open session is to use. to vote on an employment agreement between the town of Whaley and James A. Savini Jr. for the chief of police. Um, what needs to be in the motion just that we approve the contract that we just discussed or do we need to disclose anything about the contract? Um, you don't necessarily need so once it's voted on it will be public record obviously so okay anybody who wants okay. a copy of it can request a copy of it um so um okay we could make a motion to approve it as you know, as as, as discussed in the yeah. session okay i would entertain a motion then uh, will we accept the contract with the chief of police as discussed and agreed upon in the executive center I second. Okay, uh, great. Uh, all of those in favor? Julie? Yes. Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Okay, uh, and then next we've got one other discussion item to discuss the proposed FY24 budget for the police department. And for that, maybe I will let Jim talk about it, or if you want to talk about it, Brian. Yeah, this was, this was tabled from a, a previous discussion um, yeah. the essence of the request was the was um wondering if the board would support the the request for the full-time an additional full-time officer in lieu of the, some of the yeah part-time officer hours um yep so that's my intro for you jim <laughs> yes. but i think anybody remembers what time it will yeah so yeah i mean the the budget itself there's, there's not, I mean, I don't know if you want to go through the whole thing or just focus on. Um, I think focus on the, the big change. Major, the major, okay. Um, so I, I did submit a sheet very, very late. Um, I had some issues with the power outage and lost my initial file. <laughs> so, oh, no. <laughs> um, so I had to redo it. But so the main, the major request is for a full-time, a third full-time position. We've been looking for this position for the last couple of years. We've been talking about it uh, for a multitude of reasons. We're now running into a situation with police reform and how things are playing out there. Um, we've lost a couple of part-time officers. We're kind of anticipating that this is going to be a trend. It's a It's been a trend with many, many, many other towns. Um, to just to name one, Hatfield, they're down to two part-time officers at this point. Um, they've lost all of their part-time officers to, to other departments, other opportunities. Um, so, so that's kind of the direction that things are things are going for part-time officers. Uh, we do have some committed part-time officers in our department, which is a very good thing. They've been around for years and years and years, and um, I think we've got. The majority of them, I'd say four, four at least. I'm just looking at the roster. 
um, four or five of them at least that that have no intentions of of going anywhere or pursuing um, full time opportunities. So they would like to stay with us on a, on a part time basis, which is which is helpful uh, to fill some shifts. The um, the full time position that we're looking for, I would like to hire from within our department, from the current pool of part time officers that we have. Um, there would probably be an interview process. I'd like to to bring back our um, our committee interview process, where it's not just me making a recommendation to the to the board, um, just to make it fair and objective. We need to have a, a committee formed and then um, do do interviews with the the people that would be interested in the position. But the position itself is um, a starting looking at the starting salary of forty eight thousand eight hundred and eighty dollars. Um, I came up with that. It's it's very difficult to come up with um, good average numbers because we don't really keep track of that even on our salary survey. Um, so I was looking at what a lot of other departments were starting their officers at, and uh, I just felt that this was a fair starting salary. I came up with the twenty three twenty three dollars and fifty cents per hour. Um, that's that's where you come up with the forty eight thousand eight hundred eighty dollar number. Um, so looking at the way we could structure things that would getting that third position, um, would reduce the, the way we would do the schedule and it would be flexible and we would have to try to figure out what the, the best schedule that works, but ultimately we can, we can shave off about 11 shifts per month. So that's, that's a significant savings in a sense where we can take that money and put it towards the full-time officer's um, position. So I did have some numbers on there that that would bring the part-time budget down from uh, 53,451. That would bring it down to $31,089. That's what you sound right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, just for That's context, similar. Jim, can you remind us 11 shifts out of how many we typically do with part-time officers per? I'm just, hold on one second. I, I do have a different budget we discussed um, earlier. There was a line that wasn't added in. So it's the one that, the most recent one that I just, just sent a little while ago. That's the, um, the budget that includes that Quinville line that wasn't included before in the calculation. So the, the bottom line figures are a little bit different. Yeah. But oh, so, the, uh, this has a Quinville on my paper copy. And it has a Quinville. So it's, 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 it's on there. It just wasn't added to the formula for the calculation. It oh, it was added in the formula. Okay. Yeah. On the Excel spreadsheet, it wasn't added to the, to the formula. So I have <laughs> a spreadsheet that, um, that adds that number on there. But currently, we're looking at about 23 shifts per month for our part time officers. Um, so we're reducing 11 so that. No, that leaves That's us approximately yeah. half, I guess. Yeah, yeah Is right, it right around half. <clears throat> um, so the the money from the part time line also includes some coverage for vacation time. Um, in the previous budget, it included the coverage for all of the our vacation time for for both myself and um, the other full time officer, Sergeant Bates. They covered all of our all of our um, vacation time. This budget, it's only going to cover half of the vacation time with with part time officers, um, because we feel that the other half, with overlap, um, the other half can be kind of absorbed through um, flexibility with the other full time positions and some overlap. Like if, if, for example, there'd be three days out of the week that I would be working with. Um, of the full-time officer. So those three days, if I took one of those days off, we wouldn't need to have somebody come in and fill that shift as an example. So there could be some overlap there. So that's why I only covered um, half of the vacation time for the, um, the full-time officers because of that overlap. I did, um, we currently use the comp time method. So any, any hours worked above 40 for the full-time officer, they would get comp time at time and a half. So to alleviate 
that time off and to have officers around more, um, I did add overtime cost of the budget, $3,100. That, that gives about 40 hours of overtime for our sergeant and 40 hours of overtime for a full-time officer as well. That would cover court times or any time that they'd have to stay over or come in early for anything. Um, so it's about 40 hours for each person uh, worth of overtime. There, the, the thing that's not in the, in the budget is any possible additional costs for insurance if we if we did hire somebody that required um, the medical insurance there would be an, a cost a cost associated with that um, and <clears throat> if they came in with any educational incentive any degrees that they would come in the, the town pays uh, educational incentive on top of that so so that we wouldn't know and until we knew who was coming in uh, to the town. And I did list uh, just some bullet points of the um, benefits of the additional full-time position. So you get the increased patrol coverage, which increases public safety. So basically that means that we would have um, somebody out on the road more often than we currently do. Um, so there would always be somebody out on the road conducting patrols, um, traffic enforcement, so on and so forth. Um, we're saving. The big thing with hiring from within is saving about ten thousand dollars in in training and hiring costs. We have a three hundred and fifty hour field training program that we wouldn't have to pay an officer for, um, and the additional hiring costs for medical physicals and things like that. So we're looking at about a ten thousand dollars savings by hiring within. Um, we're starting to reduce our re reliance on part-time officers as police reform rolls out more and more and comes into full effect. <clears throat> We've anticipated losing officers to other, other departments for full-time opportunities because once this is all done, our part-time officers will be fu fully certified so they could essentially take a full-time position anywhere that would take a, a lateral transfer. So um, that would... So this is starting to alleviate that reliance on the, the uh, part-time officers. Um, with an additional person that's that's committed to the town and committed to the department, um, we can increase our community outreach, increase traffic enforcement, um, better delegation of admin, resp admin responsibilities. So we would have essentially more, more people to spread out those duties so they don't all fall on my, my shoulders. Um, da, 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 da. Talked about the dedication for the officers, flexible schedule. Talked about eliminating the 11 shifts per month. We want to try to stay competitive in recruiting. Some departments, not locally that I've seen, but a lot of a lot of larger departments are offering signing on bonuses and things like that. We we can't compete with those. You know, there's they're starting full time positions at ten thousand dollars more than what we're looking at. Plus, they're giving. $10,000 sign-on bonuses. We just, we can't compete with that. But to stay competitive in Franklin County, Hampshire County, in our area where there's there's smaller smaller departments similar to our size, I believe this wage could, could um, keep us competitive with, with other departments. Uh, I talked about the overtime budget. So for, and I just threw in there just the national average, just for some numbers. The national average is recommended 2.43 officers per 1,000 residents. That would put Waitley at um, 3.88 officers for our population. So with this full-time position, that would put us right in line with the, the national average for um, providing the best service to our community. So those are the, the general numbers. Um, I think once we plug all that into the the actual budget, <clears throat> and we have all of the lines that are supposed to be calculated in there, I think we'll have the the final budget request. But um, we're we're still looking at a reduction of you know, over twenty twenty thousand dollars, twenty two thousand um, dollars, a, re a reduction from the part time officers, I should say, from that part time budget, right. reallocating those funds to the full time position. Um, yeah. I think I think it's a good investment. I think it's a good opportunity to 
to not have to come up with the full amount of money to fund this position with being able to reduce some of the, the part-time positions. So if you have any questions, I think that's the, the gist of the overview. If there's any other specific questions, I'm sure I can give you some sort of answer. Uh, do you feel that we're at risk of losing more part-time officers either through training and going to other departments or from part-time officers not wanting to go through the full training regimen? So we've, <clears throat> we're have we losing two officers because they don't want to go through the training at all. They're either too old, too late in their career, or they just don't have because there's a, a three week requirement for in person training. So we have one officer that he doesn't even have three weeks vacation at his full time job. So he can't take three weeks off to complete the in person training, anyways. So he's decided against um, trying to put that time into it. He would have to use all, all of his vacation and then some just to complete the training. So we're already losing two officers just because they don't want to complete the, the additional training. So and then who knows what could happen down the road when once our officers get certified, if they decide they want a full time career and Deerfield's hiring or Hatfield's hiring or Williamsburg or some other town that's that's paying more than we are. Or giving them better hours than we are, then, uh, you know, that we'd have to cross that bridge when we get there. But that's, that's so kind do, of fear. do you have assurances or any information of the park officers we do have that they will go through the training yes we if have they, if they have not already we, we have officers minus those two all of our officers are completing that training right now okay. we have um two officers remaining for next year uh, next training year which starts in september actually july but the training year starts september um but those two those two officers are able to start early now because our municipal police training committee and the post committee has agreed that because our second group that we're in now and it falls in the letter of, of the alphabet so a through h was first i through p is next and then the remaining are for the third group um they realized that the i through p group was the smallest group out of out of all three groups for officers that required training so they were able to open that up early for the third group. So the third group, some of those officers are already starting their training as we speak. So they, they'll probably have at least half of their training done by July 1st anyways. So, and then they'll, they'll be able to complete, they have another year to complete that training. So just, just the two officers that decided not to, everybody else has decided that they're going to okay. complete the okay. training. Yeah. I'm sure there's yeah. something else that I'm probably forgetting, but I'm gonna think. I mean, yeah, I didn't. I can't think of anything to to add to that that we discussed. Other than it is, uh, what I really like about the proposal is that it um, softens the softens the blow of an increase of a full time officer and uh, maintains uh, flexibility uh, to a good extent. Um, I think when last time we talked, uh, the target was going to be something like there would be three days a week where uh, the other full-time officer would overlap with Jim during the day, but um, some shifts that are covered by part-time folks now would be covered by this person so that we don't need as many shifts covered by part-time folks. Uh, so there would be someone who's there during the, during the day, during the week, and also during some of the shifts that are on weekends. So right. there's maybe a little less, I don't know, uh, bifurcation there. Better, uh, better continuity. Better continuity. Uh, so that I, I, uh, I think for us that if, if it didn't have that, it probably wouldn't go anywhere. And I think it's really important to acknowledge that that's a key thing to making this potentially work. 
uh, with both for our town. Yep. And just and just accentuating that the the flexible schedule does include a portion of the weekend shifts that would yeah. would be covered by full time officers as opposed to just part time officers. So yeah, that is, that's a I think that's a benefit as well. And just yeah. one one other thing to add, it's not a huge number, but um, with the two officers that have decided not to attend the training, um, that's we're. By not filling those positions, we're going to be able to reduce our budget additionally by another almost seventeen hundred dollars for for annual training that we're not going to have to spend on them um, for the next year. So this saves another seventeen hundred dollars elsewhere on the budget. So, does this require a vote from us? Um, I think we don't we don't necessarily vote on its budget, but we are at the meeting with the finance committee when it presents. Ah, um, I see. Yep. Um, so us being well informed about what he's asking for is is important. Yep. If we Got think it. he's worth supporting, then that's the time we can speak up. If we are, uh, you know, if we're in agreement with this, and I. I I'm in agreement with this. I think this would be a good point. I, I think it's certainly worth putting before the finance committee. Yep, um, I would agree. Yeah. As a worthwhile proposal. What they think about it? I guess. Yeah, well, yeah, hard, hard, hard <laughs> to predict, but, <laughs> but numbers go up. They, they're, they're usually not this uh, happy. I'm, I'm not going to <laughs> yes, uh, project. Right. So. Yeah, I think I think looking at the the number, I think is uh, ultimately is is what's going to happen is looking at that number. But knowing that, um, what what I'm looking for is just knowing that I would have the support from the select board to to recommend that number, um, as opposed to recommending the position. It's just recommending that that final number, which would include that um, position. So that's that's what I was looking for, just the the support and the recommendation for that that number, that bottom line number. Uh, as as far as your budget numbers go, you're going to have to revise again on your salary line to reflect. <laughs> right, to yeah. reflect. Yeah. Which happens every year. It's it's gonna it's gonna be for the sergeant's position, the part time officer's position. You know, if there's a cola, that that number goes up based on that as well. So. No, but if right now you've got 78501 as your 24 request. That will be 80, whatever 80, we just, 71, yeah, no, we just agreed on. Yeah, I need to go uh, at, at the end. I go through and I right as the base them. figure. So that number will go up. Yep. The salary line will go up a little bit based on that. Yep. Yep. In the living document. <laughs> In the living, <laughs> yes, right. the living budget. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, is there any further discussion of this item then? No. no. I, thank you so much for coming. Thank Jeff. you. Oh, thank, thank you for your you. time. I appreciate everything. Thank you. Okay. Anyone have a motion to adjourn? Move I adjourn. move that we adjourn. Okay. That's second. Moved and seconded. Uh, Julie? Yes. Fred? Yes. Lee? Yes. All right. Good night, everybody. <laughs>